My friends, we bring greetings to you in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a joy to be with you in this episode of Journey of Hope with WYTV7. Thank you for tuning in. I encourage you to tell others about this so that we would have more people come to know about this message of the gospel from God's word. Today, we would like to talk about face of fortune, the face of fortune. The, the word fortune, we think of a Chinese restaurant. We think of after the meal, how we like to open the fortune cookie and find out, oh, you'll have good days ahead. You're going to have a happy day ahead. Can you imagine one day you open a fortune cookie and there was nothing in it? Huh. That wouldn't be called fortune cookie. No matter how much you believe in good luck, Bible is against good luck. The word good luck is not mentioned anywhere in the Bible. But the fortune, when you think of fortune, there are many faces that come to your mind from the word of God. But to me, when I think of a face of fortune, the person who comes in my mind is Barabbas. Matthew chapter 27, verse 15 and 16. Now at the feast of the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he had delivered him to be crucified. Friends, Pilate presented Barabbas to the crowd as an alternative, seeking to escape his responsibility in the ordeal. His training in Roman justice made it difficult for Pilate to condemn an innocent man. Even today, it is very hard to condemn an innocent person, but just, just do it. It is very hard for Pilate to think about, how can I condemn the innocent man called Jesus? Pilate's offer takes on special significance. If both of these men had the same name, very interesting. Many scholars believe that the full name of Barabbas was Jesus Barabbas. Some manuscript evidence supports this theory. And if this was the case, the crowd had no choice to choose between the Jesus of Nazareth and Jesus Barabbas. They had to choose which one, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus of Nazareth. Keep in mind, Satan is not afraid of Jesus because there are many people named Jesus today. But he's afraid of the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So Jesus Barabbas, you want to choose, or Jesus of Nazareth? The face of Barabbas is truly the face of good fortune. Never had a better thing happen to a man on the day of his expected crucifixion. Jesus of Nazareth probably died on the cross that had been prepared for Jesus Barabbas. When Sabbath came, Jesus was lying in a tomb and Barabbas was sleeping in his own bed. That This graphically sets forth the central truth of the gospel. Christ died for us. A undeserved fortune. Barabbas deserved to die, my friend. Justice had finally caught up with him. But are not we all worthy of death when we are measured by God's perfect standard of righteousness? An undeserved fortune because of wasted opportunities in the life of Barabbas. Barabbas mean son of a father. This probably indicates that his father was a rabbi. His full name then would be, would have been son of rabbi. Growing up in the home of a rabbi would have given him the opportunity to know the things of God. It would have brought many special opportunities for spiritual development in the life of Barabbas. But apparently, Barabbas had failed to take advantage of those opportunities. Does that sound like your story? 
You may not have been raised in a minister's home, but God has granted you several, several special opportunities. Undeserved fortune because of wasted opportunity. Undeserved fortune because of the broken law. Barabbas had broken the law of men and the law of God. He had been a terrorist against the Roman government. He was devoted member of the zealots who were committed to the overthrow of Roman rule. In the process of pursuing this goal, he had broken many of God's laws. He had been guilty of violating almost all the second table of the Ten Commandments. Disobedience to parents, murder, stealing, lying, covetousness were characters of the life of Barabbas. My dear friends, if Jesus was going to die in place of someone else, certainly he would not die in place of Barabbas. But in the providence of God, Jesus did take the place of Barabbas so the great truth of the gospel might be revealed. And what is that truth? But God commendeth his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. He died for sinners. Let me repeat that again. Jesus died for sinners. He did not die for righteousness. He did not die for righteous people. Why did he not die for righteous people? Because there is not one who is righteous. You can be self-proclaimed righteous, but not in front of God. You cannot be righteous without the death of his son, that you accept Christ as the Lord of your life. An undeserved fortune in the life of Barabbas. How about an unsought fortune for Barabbas as Barabbas stayed in the cell awaiting for his crucifixion? He never thought to ask someone in his life to take his place. That was not even in his idea. They, he, that thought did never, never occurred in his mind. He simply assumed that the crimes have finally caught up with him. No one was more surprised than Barabbas with the outcome. He must have received the news of his release with some skepticism. He may have even been thought that the soldiers were playing pranks with him. But friends, this was not prank. The news to Barabbas was true. That Jesus of Nazareth, was going to die in his place. An unsought fortune for Barabbas, an unsought fortune for sinners like you and me. Jesus Christ did not die in response to any appeal on our part. Indeed, instead of sinners pleading with him to bear their sins on the cross, they were busy rejecting Jesus Christ. He came to his own, and his own received him not. John chapter 1, verse 11. The only explanation of Jesus' action on the cross, the only explanation of Jesus releasing Barabbas from jail, is called love. He died for us because he wanted to save you and me from eternal hell. We have seen an undeserved fortune. We have seen an unsought fortune. Finally, we see the unrestricted fortune. The freedom of Barabbas, all Barabbas had to do was walk out of jail, and he was free man. Jesus was going to die in his place. By Pilate's decree, the Roman law had no claim on Barabbas. His debt to the society was paid. It must have been taken Barabbas a long time to realize what had really happened to him. He may have continued to hide every time he saw a Roman soldier coming his way. He may have expected some word that it was not really true. It was only a dream. But friends, the good news is it was true. Barabbas had 
good fortune to receive unrestricted freedom at the expense of another man, Jesus Christ. Freedom through the gospel. Forgiveness must be God's greatest gift to humanity. It means that God has canceled the entire debt of our sin. But we must never forget that God is free to cancel the debt only because Christ paid for it. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. And Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 says, In Christ, we have the redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins. This means we can know freedom from condemnation. We can know freedom. I'm talking about K-N-O-W. We can know freedom from condemnation. We can know freedom from guilt. We can know freedom from the stains of sin. All through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. No wonder Paul explained. For God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Barabbas accepted Jesus' death in his place. He gladly walked out of the jail and allowed Jesus to die in his place. I don't know, friends, if Barabbas ever realized the meaning of substitution. But we have no excuse to neglect the significance today. You know, a young man named Bill, who joined the Navy World War II, he said one night when he came home, he parked his ship in Boston. And he decided to visit his old pastor. And he said during his visit, the pastor said, Bill, tell me the most exciting experience you have had so far in the World War II. Bill hesitated. It wasn't that he had trouble selecting the most exciting experience. Rather, the experience he had in mind was so wonderful and sacred that he had trouble putting them in words. Bill was the captain of a large transport that, along with a convoy, was making its way across the Atlantic. One day, an enemy submarine rose in the sea a short distance away. Bill saw a torpedo coming directly towards his transport, loaded with the hundreds of young men. He had no time to change course. Through the loudspeaker, he shouted, Boys, this is it. Nearby was a small escorting destroyer. The captain of the destroyer also saw the submarine torpedo and torpedo. Without a moment's hesitation, he gave order, full speed ahead. The tiny destroyed destroyer eased into the path of the torpedo, taking the full impact of the deadly missile midship. The destroyer blew apart and sank quickly. Every man of the crew was lost. For a long time, Bill remained silent. Then he glanced up into the beloved pastor and said, the skipper of that destroyer was my best friend. Again, after that, Bill became quiet for a minute. Then he said, you know, Pastor, there is a verse in the Bible that has special meaning for me now. It is, greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. But today I want to share it with you through WYTV7. We were not friends of Jesus when he laid down his life for us. We were his enemies. Nevertheless, he took our place on the cross. Will you receive him as your Savior and Lord today? My friends, the life in front of you is far more important than the life that is behind you. Look at the life of Barabbas. Sitting in prison, waiting for the crucifixion. 
on the day of crucifixion. He did not know that Pilate had asked him, do you want Barabbas or do you want Christ? Of course, the Bible tells us people chose Christ to be crucified, allow Barabbas to go free. You know, it makes sense if Jesus died for doctors, if Jesus died for the intellectuals, if Jesus died only for the rich people, if Jesus died only for the elite, it makes sense. No, no. Jesus died for all. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He died for all. When you think about the face of fortune, it was Barabbas. Because according to the world, he deserved to die on the cross. But God, through his sovereign grace, sends his only begotten son to die in his place. Friends, I know where I would be without Christ. I will be on my way to hell. Some of you never accepted Christ. Today is the day of salvation. I'm asking you, basis on the word of God, would you put your trust in him? Say to the Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I don't deserve this fortune, but I'm not going to deny it because you make it available for me today through your son. If you pray that prayer sincerely from your heart, no matter what your religious background, would you place your trust in Christ? Lord, save me, just like you saved Barabbas. I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to remain faithful to you and let the world know when they look at my face, a face of a fortune. I don't deserve it. I didn't seek it, but you gave it to me. Thank you. If you pray that prayer sincerely from your heart, friends, to be a follower of Christ, to be a disciple of the Lord, would you please write to us at P.O. Box 8808, Columbus, Georgia, 31808. Now may the grace of God, peace of his son, and love that he has abide with you and me till we meet again. Thank you. God bless you.